I've heard a lot about FIG, which is apparently a tool for the command line. Um, in all transparency, I work as a developer advocate at Warp, in case you didn't already know, which is kind of a competitor to FIG, which is why I'm posting this video on my personal channel and not on the official Warp YouTube channel. But believe it or not, I've worked at Warp for like a year now and I haven't actually tried out FIG and I finally had some free time this weekend and I thought I would kind of just record myself um, trying it out and this is mostly just going to be a very genuine reaction to me um, downloading it for the first time and just seeing what features it has and yeah. So I ended up just downloading it through the button here. So you'll see it's in my applications here and if I double click on it, it opens up this dashboard and I have to sign in. You guys don't get to see what my email is. Signing in. I'm gonna say the rubber ducky because that's my username and I don't want to invite a team. How do I get started? Coming in from the homepage, I honestly just want to try out the autocomplete because I heard that FIG's autocomplete is really awesome. Open up my iTerm terminal. How do I know if I have FIG installed? Or will it just start autocompleting for me right away? Let's try one of the commands here. git add, no, uh, FIG, brew install FIG, FIG, Waiting, waiting. Okay, I found this under settings where I can choose my preferred terminal for fig to launch commands in. Currently it's set to the, the default terminal on a Mac OS. Uh, I'm gonna change it to iTerm2, which is the terminal I'm using. I think it auto saves that. So maybe I can restart iTerm and it will start running fig. Now if I do fig, oh nice. Okay, so now it seems like it's installed. When I ran fig, it opened up this dashboard. So I installed fig, opened up my existing terminal, start typing a command like cd or ls. Let's try that. Um, cd. It didn't just work, so um, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. All right, fig is not working. Enable accessibility permission. Fig uses permission to position the autocomplete window and insert text on your behalf. Okay, let's try this. Go to setting, security and privacy, accessibility, and let's give fig access. Okay, gave fig access, lock this, close this, and then CD. No, still not working? What's, what's wrong? What's wrong? Fig doctor. Oh, oh, I saw it. Oh, it is working. I think it was enabling it in accessibility. That was that was it. That was pretty cool. Now I can see the menu pop up. Yeah, yeah. Fig doctor. Wow, cool. So I can do stuff like CDN and it will help me figure out what folder. So like if I want to go into, what do I have? Documents and then scripts. I like how they're at the bottom. There's like an explanation of what it does. Control K. Oh, nice. It'll expand that explanation for me so I can use the binary search to find the commit that introduced the bug. I can keep going down. I like this. This is pretty cool. Okay, the next thing I wanted to try, and this is, I'm basically just going through whatever's on their homepage, is AI, which um, I think is really cool. Like the warp terminal has its own AI features and it's had it for quite a while. So I actually think I'm going to be underwhelmed by the AI in fig, but I do want to try it out. It seems like I can just run fig AI and it translates my text to commands. So I'm also going to click on the get started to read a little bit more about the documentation in case they have uh, anything interesting to say. It's based on OpenAI's codex language model. Same thing for warp. You can use hashtag as shorthand. You can also turn off this feature, which is interesting. So let's give it a try. Um, fig AI. Uh, how do I delete all processes running on port 3000? It's my go-to. Oh, uh, user is not on a pro plan. For more details, run. Oh, do I need do I need a pro plan for this? So it says it says for more details, run Fig Pro. Ran that. Uh, not seeing anything. Oh, I see. So it op uh, running Fig Pro opens this page up in your dashboard. So it says my account is currently on the free plan, uh, but the AI command search is uh, under a paid plan. So uh, fortunately, I cannot try it out. Um, 
and warp it's free. I'm trying to keep this very unbiased. I'm trying to keep this like a genuine reaction of just fig. So I'm gonna shut up about warp because uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I can't try out fig AI. Totally fine. Let's go to the next thing here. So this one I saw on the homepage and I was actually like really intrigued about it. It seems like I can easily edit my uh, dot files, which is really awesome. The thing that draws my eye in here is like aliases. I uh, recently got a little bit into like setting my aliases and a bunch of that stuff. So I'm pretty interested in this. I'm going to again click on the learn more. Fig.files is a simpler way to manage your shell configuration, no more editing files and writing cryptic shell code. And instead you can kind of do it through this UI that Fig gives you. Okay, your dot file blocks are synced between devices automatically and will also work across shells. To get started, I can run Fig to open the Fig dashboard. I don't need to run that because I already have it up here. Um, and then click on the dot files. Uh, let me get out of settings, uh, click on dot files. Okay, and then I wanna create a block, so I'm gonna press new block. I'm gonna create a new alias. Okay, so it opens this thing up here, and I don't know, um, <laughs> put under the spot here, what should I do? This is common, right? LA is ls-a. ls-a will print out all your directories, but uh, include the names that begin with a dot, which the normal ls command does not do. Right now, without the alias existing, if I type in la, it'll say it doesn't recognize this command because it's not a correct command. Now I have to run fig source to, I think, yeah, to make sure that it registers these things. And then now if I type in la, nice, it, um, it uh it shows me all I don't have any I don't have any files dot files here. Uh, maybe if I go into like uh my home directory and I type in LA. Yeah. So if I type in LS, you'll see it it only shows like these folders here. But when I type in LA, which is the alias for LS dash A, um you'll see like there's a bunch of uh folders here that start with a dot. The way that I do it is I have to go into my .zshrc file, uh, which I actually have an alias for. So if I type in viz, which is actually an alias for, you'll see here, uh, to edit my zhrc config file in NeoVim, you'll see that I have to manually put all my aliases here and type them out. And I really like that Fig has kind of this UI here that kind of lets me do it in, in a really cool and clean UI. And yeah, I, I see in their documentation that, let's see, become a dot .files power user. This is pretty cool. Hmm, I can disable a block for a specific shell or operating system. That's cool. So I can apparently disable aliases based on if I'm working in a certain shell. If I go here, I assume, maybe I click here, yeah. I can say, oh, I want this alias to work in my bash shell and my ZSH shell, but not my fish shell. And I only want it to work in like the Mac OS. That's really cool. I can also import my existing dot files to fig. Let's try this. So I want to import my existing aliases, like all these that I have here in my .zshrc file into blocks in my fig uh, dashboard. I think that's, that's what this means. Click the import bo button in the top left. So, all right, this is the top right, but I'm assuming this is what it's referring to. I can say import my doc dot files. Um, oh, wow. Okay, oh wow. It automatically found my uh, .zshrc file. Um, so let me pull it up side by side so you can see. I think it's alphabetical maybe, yeah, alphabetical. So you see my calories uh, alias is here, alias calories, and it's an alias for quickly editing my calorie tracker.txt. Right here is what the command is and you'll see that it registers it in, in fig and same with the rest of these, right? It also registers my shortcuts. So here I have shorthands for uh, directory paths. So like for example, my starship underscore config is a variable to represent like the complete path to my starship.toml file and you'll see that it registers it here oh select all okay and i'm gonna import like the benefit of this i guess is that i can go in and do stuff like you know disable it for certain shells or operating systems i can also delete it really easily or even disable it you know let's try it if i want to disable this just just for like a quick sec maybe i'm doing a tutorial filming a video and i just don't want my aliases to be on i can type in la now and uh oh it still registers it um do I have to? Oh, I have to. So I have to remember to. Sorry, I have to remember to type in fig source. Okay, and now if I type in la, 
yes, now it's disabled, right? And then, and then if I go back and, and enable it, let's say I'm done with filming and I want it to be enabled again, I have to remember to run fix source, but I should be able to type in, uh, sorry, not LS, um, should be able to type in LA and it's enabled again. That That's pretty cool. Like I can see the benefit for this. This is, this is pretty awesome. So there was autocomplete AI.files. I explored all those. Okay, now there's plugins, which is the last thing they have on their homepage. Click this to learn a little bit more. So Fig has a lot of plugins. I'm assuming these are community source. Let's see, I don't know if there's are there any fun ones I can play around with just to see. This has 16,000 stars. So ZSH syntax highlighting adds fish-like syntax highlighting for ZSH. Okay, so I can click install plugin here. Okay, I gotta sign in. All right, okay. What, what, where, where, what, that didn't do anything. How do I install it? Install plugin. Okay, there we go. Didn't work the first time, but it worked the second time once I logged in again. Okay, so then I'm gonna press install plugin here. ZSH syntax highlighting is installed. Run fig source to apply changes. So I'm gonna run fig source. Cool, let me, let me try typing in some stuff so I can type in, it says I can type in echo term. Cool. There's some syntax highlighting, right? I can see my echo is in green and the quotes are in yellow and the string itself is in pink. This is pretty cool. Yeah. I want to know how to disable it so I can see what it looks like before. Uh, I can disable it through here. So now I can run fig source. Okay. Now if I, no, I feel like it's still syntax highlighting. Well, let me uninstall it overall. Okay. So this is uninstalled fig source. Echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now it's back to normal, right? See, it's, it's not highlighting anything. But I had to, I had to uninstall the whole thing. Like, I don't think the disabling works. I would definitely have a lot of fun playing around with all these plugins. Like, I think that's really cool. It makes me excited to get to, like, try out all these things. I think there's a lot of things to try out, but for the most part, I went through the, the four things I wanted to try out, which is autocomplete AI, which I technically couldn't try out, uh, dot files and, and plugins. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I talk a lot about terminal and CLI related things. So if you like this sort of content, uh, please make sure to subscribe or just like leave a comment or question uh, down below. Thanks for watching. See ya.